There's a woman in a white gown. This could be like West Wing, Jared. This will change your paranormal investigations forever. We're about to share a brand new way to investigate the paranormal with you, and it's something you've never seen done before. I am so, so stoked to finally announce to you guys the release of Ghost Tube Seer and Ghost Tube Lens. This video is going to detail what these tools are, how they work, some evidence that Jared and I have already captured in our own paranormal investigations, and how you can use Ghost Tube Seer for yourself. Let's begin with Ghost Tube Seer. This is a world first paranormal tool that leverages the power of artificial intelligence and combines it with the environmental sensory reading of your device. Basically, Seer will grab words and phrases generated by an investigator's phone and run these through an advanced artificial intelligence algorithm that is going to produce unique visuals and then in turn display these on your phone screen. Most of the paranormal equipment that are used today are sort of limited in the responses that they can receive. Yes, no responses, for example, single words, or some just a simple beep. But Ghost Tipsy has endless possibilities. Think about it. They say a picture paints a thousand words. So imagine the types of questions that you can ask Ghost tube seer. Can you show me what you look like? Can you show me what this place used to look like? Can you show me what's happening around you? We're not talking about words or sounds, but actual images. Images of people, places, things, objects, events. Something that until now couldn't be conveyed with simple yes, no binary responses typical of traditional paranormal equipment. So how does this all work? Well, Ghost Tube Seer uses the magnetometer in your device to pick up on magnetic fluctuations. And in turn, EMF, which a lot of people believe that spirits can manipulate. Using these readings, it selects words from a pre-populated dictionary, just like our Ghost Tube original app and some of the other tools you've seen other paranormal investigators use. But what makes Ghost Tube Seer different is that it then runs those words through an artificial artificial intelligence algorithm to generate unique visuals. Investigators can then interpret these images for relevance, meaning, and insight. This is something that we have already been doing on our paranormal investigations and something that has been really interesting and compelling, especially when different interpretations of images are interwoven to produce unique meanings. We're obviously looking to test the paranormal theories that spirits can manipulate their environment to communicate. And one of the first times we used Ghost Tube Seer, we actually got some pretty incredible results. Our first proper test of Ghost Tube Seer in the field was done at the old Adelaide jail. This place is notoriously haunted and given its history while in operation, which spanned from 1841 to 1988, it's not surprising to understand why. We were pretty casual when we used it for the first time. We were just kind of walking around the building, asking questions to see what we were gonna get. We weren't actually expecting to get anything. It was when we got to the area known as the new building that we really received our first image of relevance. And what's more, this came through in a cell that's known to be quite active with a former inmate literally buried right outside. And further to this, it's also the cell block where majority of the executions by hanging occurred at the jail. Amy had just asked, can you show yourself to us? Can you show us what you look like? And this is the image that appeared. As the image forms, you'll see a man with a large red bushy beard and dark eyes appear. It seems to me as though he could be in an environment similar to a jail, as you can see some shapes that kind of look like bars in the background. What do you guys think? We've also discussed this a lot amongst ourselves, but how cool is it that we now have a tool that could potentially verify psychic readings of a haunted location? I mean, think about it. Let's say that you are a psychic, you enter a haunted place and you pick up on imagery of say a man with a beard in a cell and then Ghost Tube C is able to produce something that is very similar that just validates and verifies that information. This is something we've never been able to do before. We have received a number of other images on Ghost Tube C while testing it in the field and we're going to show you some of them so you can see the types of images that Ghost Tube Seer can possibly generate. Each of these images can obviously tell quite the story and some of them have been really really interesting. Whether that's because they were relevant to the history of the location, relevant to the spirits that are said to haunt there, or just relevant to what we were asking in that moment. We've been so impressed with Ghost Tube Seer and it's also really really fun to use on investigations but we didn't want to just stop right there. We can see way more potential with this app. So we went a step further. In addition to testing paranormal theories related to EMF, we really wanted to take things onto another deeper level and use some experiments that would really peer into the human psyche. To do this, we wanted to create an immersive experience. So we looked to augmented reality and virtual reality and how we could use these in our investigations. The result 
with GhostTube Lens, a virtual reality headset that you can use with GhostTube Seer so you can start to introduce sensory experiments into your investigations. Rather than competing with distractions in the external environment, you can now enter an immersive 3D space that allows you to conduct your GhostTube Seer sessions. This is a way to truly center and focus your mind to really concentrate on the visual information that you may receive, as well as from your other senses. Essentially, you're gonna be immersed in visual white noise unless an image is actively generating, so you can think of it as a kind of digital scrying. We are actually big fans of the Estes method, me in particular, I do this a lot on Amy's Crypt, which looks at trance states and sensory deprivation type experiments. So we really wanted to explore this with GhostTube Lens. We have actually been experimenting with wearing goes to blends while performing traditional style SD sessions. This is the user wearing noise cancelling headphones while listening to a spirit box and just relaying anything that they hear come through. But instead of wearing a blindfold, which is the traditional way of doing the SD session, we're using Ghost to blends. One of the most memorable sessions we had while testing Ghost to Pseer with Ghost to blends was at J Ward, which was a jail and an asylum for the criminally insane that dates back to the mid 1800s. J Ward is already an incredibly haunted place. So of course, when we use Ghost 2 Blends, we chose to do it in one of the most active and haunted areas of the place. This was an old governor's quarters that contains a mysterious bathtub. There's allegedly a dark entity nicknamed the Butcher that lingers here who has scratched and bitten people who enter the room. And this also goes along with some tales of murders that occurred within that bathtub. During this experiment, Amy lied in an old creepy looking bathtub whilst wearing Ghost 2 Blends and watching Ghost Tubes here. She actually described a corridor that sounded a lot like the West Wing, another haunted area in the location. Not only did she describe the hallway, but she also described what looked like a person wearing a white gown, which was very compelling considering the ghost story there. What I began to see here really reminded me of West Wing in J Ward. And in addition, I was seeing something that looked like a matron, which is crazy because so many people have actually reported to sight a woman in a long white gown in that very area. Uh, is this like a matron? This isn't what I'm hearing. This is, a, I'm asking a question. We know we have a lady in West Wing that walks down the centre of the corridor and she stands and walks and she rubs her hands together like this and she has been seen by quite a few people. Towards the end of the session, Amy was looking and trying to describe something that she really couldn't make out. Oh, I can't tell what this is yet. Here I was seeing what I perceived in the moment to be some sort of underground cave with like a river running through it, possibly lava and all ending up going into a deep hole in the ground. To me, I would describe this as like a traditionally hell-like scene, which is interesting because when you start considering the history and the folklore related to that room, it definitely could be interpreted as a hell-like place. It wasn't until after that I reviewed her C-session, I actually thought what she was looking at was a rusty old bathtub, complete with a faucet and a drain. Which, when you consider where she was laying at the time, is pretty crazy. While I was watching this image being generated in the moment, it did not click to me at all that it looked like a bathtub, but now in reflection and after talking and discussing it, I can see it. But perhaps these two interpretations do go hand in hand with one another, and my initial interpretation is still of importance. And I do really think that it's cool that we're able to record these ghost tube seer sessions while you're using the lens, because once you're done with your session, you can share that, share the images, share what you saw and experienced with other investigators whether that's on your team or others that you're working with. We also tried this while investigating the Aradale Lunatic Asylum quite recently, which is one of the most haunted places in Australia and has a long, terrible history. For this particular experiment, I wore the ghost tube lens while Amy asked a series of questions. We chose to do this in the room where electroconvulsive therapy was performed, and some of our results actually could have been related to this. For this particular experiment, Jared did not wear the noise cancelling headphones, so he could actually hear me and respond in real time. And one of the first things that he reported to see and come through was someone's creepy grin with a lot of teeth. Lots of teeth. What else do you see? Really jagged teeth. Obviously an image like this could be interpreted in lots of different ways. And you know, people that study dream interpretation, there's a lot of theories about what teeth mean and what they could potentially represent. We didn't take too much notice of it at first, but it wasn't until later in the session that we got another image of teeth where we started to think, could this have more relevance than we realized? This is really weird. I'm seeing really weird teeth again. Different though, this is like an older person's mouth with weird crooked teeth in it and weird lips. 
really zoomed in on their teeth. By this point, since we had received two images that were really, really similar, I thought there must be some significance there. And that got me thinking, we were performing this session in the electroconvulsive therapy room where that horrific treatment once was conducted. Being highly dangerous and unregulated back in the day, this practice could lead to broken bones, jaws and teeth. It's common that people would have had something placed in their mouth to attempt to remedy the danger to teeth during this procedure. And I cannot say for sure, but to me, maybe this was all related. From experimenting with these tools, we found that there's actually a lot of different ways you could use ghost tube sear and ghost tube lens. And one of my favourites is a new experiment we refer to as mind focus. This mode essentially allows someone to concentrate on a repetitive and calming image that we hope can centre someone's mind and their focus and allow them to induce a trance-like state. So picture performing an Estes method, but instead of being blindfolded, you are fixated on a glowing ring, smoke, white noise, or a number of other images we use as stimuli. For me, I found out that repetitive sound and visuals really helps me get into that zone and get there really quick, which is where we see most of our best communication come through. For me personally, I'm a very anxious person. I get stressed a lot very easily, as Amy will tell you. So when I'm actually doing Estes methods, you guys probably don't realize, but I actually find it quite hard to focus on what I'm actually hearing, especially if it's been a long Day. It really helps me achieve that trance-like state and I feel like when I get to that state I get a lot more compelling responses through the spirit box. The possibilities for ghost tubes here and ghost tube lens are just they're endless and we are excited for the future and how we can adapt and further the experiments that we can use surrounding this technology. Some experiments that we're looking at uh, to come up are related to the collective unconscious, a theory proposed by Carl Jung that basically states that our unconscious minds are all interlinked and interconnected connected or even new forms of scrying that's always been traditionally done with things like fire mirrors candles water but now we can bring it into a digital age so in case you guys can't tell i'm really excited to finally share ghost tube serum ghost tube lens with you guys we both are and uh, you know as always we're really open to feedback so you know please use it go out there go investigate in the field let us know how you're using it have you come up with any new experiments that we could we could be using with ghost tube serum ghost tube lens tell us about the images you're receiving please share them with us please share them on social social media as well. We're really interested to see how these new tools are going to help the paranormal community. There are so many ways that you could use this tool. You could hold on to it and walk around a haunted location and ask for interactions. You could leave it stationary and alone in a particularly active, uh, say, haunted room. You can use it while doing the Estes method, or you can use it without the noise cancelling headphones. We're only really scratching the surface on how we can utilize this as investigators. Obviously, we want you guys to get enjoyment and use out of these tools on your investigations. So here are some tips. Just like a lot of the other paranormal tools you use, Ghost Tube Sea relies on environmental sensors in your device. This can be triggered by nearby magnets, electronics, and other things that emit magnetic or electromagnetic fields. So it's always important to keep this in mind when interpreting your results. Because the magnetometer in your device acts as a compass, abrupt and sudden movements can also trigger results. So make sure you keep this in mind when you're using Ghost Tube Seer. Like all of our other Ghost Tube apps, and for that matter, every single paranormal tool that is used today, do not expect everything that comes through Ghost Tube Seer to actually be paranormal. All tools currently used by paranormal investigators should be considered experimental and the same goes for our own tools. We use these to test paranormal theories and we're always looking for relevance and repeatability. We also highly encourage you to use Ghost Tube Seer along with other paranormal equipment because if you're able to get responses through multiple devices that always makes things a lot more compelling. If you've watched this far you're probably wondering how can I get a copy of Ghost Tube Seer for myself or Ghost Tube Lens. Ghost Tube Seer will be available in March but you can pre-order it right now on the Google Play and Apple App Store. We'll leave links below. By pre-ordering, it means your device will automatically download Ghost Tube Seer as soon as it becomes available in March this year. Ghost Tube Lens will follow shortly after and will be available in the app itself or on our website, ghosttube.com. It feels so good to finally share this tool with you guys, Crypt Keepers. Yeah, honestly, we have worked so hard. It feels really good to get it out there. <laughs> And further to that, I really cannot wait to see what the future holds for this project because I can see there being so many changes and implications to the way we investigate and for the paranormal field with this. I also just really wanted to let you guys know that we have some big investigations coming up and of course we will be using ghost tubes here and ghost tube lens within those investigations we're also about to embark on some more international travel we will be heading back to the united states to do a bunch of filming but i'm also scouting other haunted locations further abroad too 
I also did want to say a special thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members. These guys have actually been helping us test Ghost Tube Sear for a while now, so they got the first look and honestly, the feedback and the help and the assistance with it has, it's, it's really helped us out. It means a lot to us. And if there's anyone watching and you are interested in helping test out any of our future projects, because we do have a lot planned, I'm going to leave links to my Patreon and my YouTube members down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, because that really helps us out. You can also follow us on social media. They are linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.